Hey YouTube, what's happening? Chris here. Want to bring you guys a little update on Litecoin. Since we were talking about it yesterday, guys, we're going to see what happened and the follow through and what's going on. So we're really going to zoom in close. We're going to be looking at the four hour here. We're going to be looking at some Fibonacci levels, some potential areas I may be looking at going long, different things like that, guys. If you could, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I'm trying to get 100 likes on this video, guys. And the last video we did, I can't believe it. We almost hit 300 likes. So I can't do it without you guys, and you guys are wonderful. Can't can't thank you enough. So what we're going to do, guys, we're going to dig into this a little bit here. I'm going to tell you some different areas that I'm looking at, different targets I'm looking at, and talking about, guys, have we potentially bottomed in terms of the cryptocurrency market? Have we actually gotten there? You know, is this that, that impulse wave that needed to come in? So we're going to talk about that, guys. We're going to get into it. And uh, you guys, if you could, just comment, like, subscribe, all that. I appreciate it. So Litecoin on the four hour here, guys. What you see is we had a big push up, and we were pushed up on increasing bullish volume, which, guys, the volume that came in yesterday was great. It was, it was impressive. We haven't seen that in quite a while. So with that volume, you have to anticipate that pullback that's going to be coming, guys. All right? Anything that goes straight up is going to be coming down. So we're going to look for some key areas here that we could potentially long out of this you know, new trend change that's taking place, at least, guys, on the short term. Remember, you have short-term trend changes, you have intermediate-term trend changes, and you have longer-term trend changes. And you know what, guys? Maybe we have gotten to that point where the longer-term trend is changing. In terms of this like altcoin and, and bitcoin season so we'll see guys but we had this big push up now if this is extremely bullish we will bounce off you see where we're at right here we'll bounce off this 0 0.236 area and we'll move higher that's extremely bullish if you see that all right next areas you're going to be looking at are the 0 0.382 around 40 dollars for potential long right here and guys if you're convinced of this that this impulse wave if we're gonna have a pullback and then we're gonna move in to say that third wave what you're gonna be doing is you'll start laddering in so depending on how things look you could start you know small here and then add as you go down to this 50 and this 0 0.618 and remember this isn't financial advice guys but this area here, the 0.618 is where you're going to get a lot of bounces in cryptocurrency and especially that 0.65, which is the golden pocket. You'll have a wick that will go down in there, guys, and then you'll move back up. And if you get it at the 0.618, and a lot of times it will at least go to the 0.382. And there's some gains to be made there, so you have to think about that. And that's not even the factor, say, this is just your first one wave, then we're going to have a beautiful pullback for our two, and then we're going to set our three. And typically, guys, that third wave is the longest, but it's never the shortest. And that's where we have to look for these different things. But, you know, you just start slowly laddering in. And depends. Say, guys, if it's really looking harsh and you think, okay, the 0 0.382, you're not going to get a bounce off. Then you start looking at the 50 here and the 0 0.618 and you see what happens. Now, if it got down to the 0 0.786, it may just roll back over and we could go to a lower low. That's, that's excuse me, guys, completely possible. But with this volume we had in here, guys, even this, we had this beautiful candle come in here. And then we had basically a doji. And, guys, that's why you have to be patient because when you saw that doji in the textbooks, you'd say, okay, that's the bulls and the bears fighting. There's indecision right there after a big, strong candle like this. So that must mean we're going back down. And we didn't have follow through to the negative side. We would have had this doji then, then a bearish candle here. That would have been different, but we didn't. We had a higher close, then a higher close, and then we went up here, and we had this basically like shooting star candle. We got a little wick down here, so I wouldn't necessarily call it an exact shooting star candle because a shooting star candle, you want the wick to be two to three times as long as the body, and you really don't want a wick down at the bottom, but we'll call it a shooting star candle, guys, where we had rejection. The RSI got overextended, and you can even see right now, guys, we're at 82 right now, so that's why I'm not necessarily thinking we're going to bounce off the 0 0.236, but we're going to be getting a bounce in here guys it could be at the 0 0.618 at that 3740 is where I'm going to be looking at and that's also going to coincide with the 20 EMA which is very powerful in cryptocurrency guys that's one of the best ones and uh, my my cousin-in-law Noah from Noah's Arger Crypto he was the one who turned me on watching some of his videos and everything like that to the 20 EMA and, and I started doing some back testing and looking and you know, it, it really is. It's one of the best ones. So shout out to him. But, you know, guys, we got to pay attention to these things and we have to understand what's taking place. I mean, take, take a look at this impulse here, how this came in. 
I mean, look at the volume, how it just increases. And you can see the moving averages start crossing, and then that 20 just exploded up. So now look what seems to be a good spot to maybe go long here around this 3907. If it's going to be coinciding here with the, the 20 EMA, that's something you might want to look at, or you're going to have to see if the 20 EMA even holds. Who knows, guys? You know, that's why we have plans for if it goes to the 0 0.236 or we have plans if it's going to go to the 0 0.618. We have to have plans upside, downside, sideways. That's what we're always going to say on this channel. Plans for up, down, sideways. And plans for just holding. Just being in, in your capital. You know, guys, in a bear market, being in cash is king that's that's what you want to be so that when you see these bottoms getting close to these bottoms you're able to buy for some of the best prices and then you can ride that up so hodling's great in a bull market hodling's bad in a bear market we want to be in cash right or we want to be shorting the market and we want to be going with the trend we don't want to fight the trend unless we're very experienced traders and we're trying to get in and out and we're scalping so say you're trying to run in like this here, guys. We just see this big, big impulse wave. And guys, this is what I did on Bitcoin. It was a big impulse wave, and, and our RSI was extended in the 90s. So I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to jump on this, and I'm going to ride it down to you know around the 0 0.236, and I'm going to start seeing what's happening because we're going to have that pullback, and that's a scalp. And then you could get out here if you're uncomfortable, or you could set a break even where you got in at, and you could just see what happens and let it ride. And that's the thing, guys. You, you got to cut the losers fast, and you have to let the winners run. So sometimes I'll just put a break-even stop on it and say, you know what? I want to see what happens with this. I want to see where it goes. And if I break even, who cares? I break even, and it was worth the chance, and I learned something. And you know, guys, that's why, and, and I'll be open and honest with you, I haven't in this game yet put more than $1,500 on a trade. And the reason for that is, Many very smart investors and traders in their first year to three years, that's when they get busted. They get broke hard. Um, you know, I, I believe it was Eric Cho who, who is, is wonderful. He's one of the guys I look up to, his, his work and things like that. I'll check in on him from time to time. But he even said, I believe it was him who, who lost $20,000 when he first started trading in oil. So what I've learned from these guys is I want to play it small. And I want to learn as much as I can. And, you know, hey, make $30 here, or make $20 here, this or that, while I learn these things. So it's basically like paper trading, but you have money on the line, so you're going to be wanting to do the best that you can. You know, with paper trading, you can just kind of throw it around or this, that. When your own money's involved, you, you look at things differently. And, you know, that's why I play such small positions now because I've only done this for a year now, guys. And I want for the next year to two years just to continue to play small so I can really learn. And, you know, a lot of guys get liquidated and all these different things and I've been blessed not to not to have that happen because I don't get reckless you know and I think the best thing to do is to either paper trade or do really small trading just to really improve and then you know guys down the line if it shows you know after a year two years that you know this is something that's that's pretty successful and I should be putting more money on it then that's what we'll do but you know this is a learning process I'm, I'm reading I'm learning and I'm back testing all these things so that when bigger money's on the line, you've been there before. You know, so it's just like anything in life. The more, the more you do something, the more comfortable you're going to get, and the more th different things you see. You know, back in the day, guys, when I first got in, and I didn't know better. I would have seen a spike like this and go, "Oh my gosh, we're going to the moon!" You know, but it's going to take time. You're going to have those pullbacks, and smart traders are going to be taking profits, and scalpers, and day traders, and you know, swing traders, and all the all this different stuff that people are going to be playing the markets completely different. You know, there are guys taking profits all up here, guys, and then they jumped on the short side, and they're going to ride it back down to probably the 0 0.618. And then they'll they'll sell that, and then they'll long. I mean, it's just back and forth. They have no emotional attachment to any coin or any project. And when you start trading, that's where you get to, you know. So, you know, these, guys, these are just some of the things I want to tell you guys to pay attention to. And we're just looking at this now. We're not going to get back out on the day too much. I wanted to just stay on the four hour with you guys and really look at this move, this impulse that's happening. And I want to know where you guys think this is going to land. Is it going to be at the 0 0.5 around that 3907? Or do you guys, are you betting on the 0 0.382? All my books, guys, say that a lot of the bounces really take place at that 0 0.382 
to the 0 0.5 and then they'll talk a little bit about um, the 0 0.618 but in cryptocurrency I definitely see the 0 0.618 a lot and we even see the 0 0.786 from time to time like how that around that $35 that wouldn't surprise me so this market is a little different than the traditional books but they come in great handy you know and we just got to continue to learn this stuff guys I mean this impulse wave it's going to be coming back down at some point here I mean you can see the RSI starting to roll over right now pointing down so we got to pay attention to that and what we can do is actually draw a trend line like this and we're going to see if we get it could come all the way down here guys bounce off this again then we make our next move and remember the wider the gap here if it does come back down here we get a bounce off that the stronger this trend line is and then guys will want to be going long off trend lines right now this is too steep of a move to draw a trend line on you wouldn't want to draw a trend line on that yet so well these are the things I'm looking at guys we're at 4337 right now up 1.9 percent after the big day that we had yesterday so that's a big deal but I wanted to check in with you guys. God bless each and every one of you. I'm going to try to get out a Bitcoin video, I, I believe, here. Um, just got a little bit of time. But, you know, guys, just keep working hard. Keep grinding. I'm proud of each and every one of you. God bless you all.